Howdy friends, Jake from GD Honey Acres here. Today we're going to have some fun making some telescopic covers with for our Langstroth beehives. I got to make five in total and as you can tell I'm already dirty because I've already been working out here in the wood shop. The wife helped me rip down some 2x4s and a useful 1x material because I am currently out of 1x material. Wood stove's hot, got my coffee, let's get started and have some fun. All right, now what I went ahead and already did is kind of drew up my thoughts and my measurements are on here as well. We're going to have two boards at two and a quarters by 21 and three quarters or 5.7 centimeters or 55.245 centimeters. We're going to have two boards at 16 and three eighths by two and a quarter or 41.6 centimeters by 5.7 centimeters. The whole thing should come out to being our 21 3 quarters by about 17 and 7 eighths once you add on 3 quarter inches from each board. That's this measurement down here. Then I will have a sheet of plywood that I will put on top of all of that at 17 and 7 eighths by 21 and 3 quarters or 55.245 centimeters by 45.4 centimeters. And of course this is going to be all like three quarter material for our boards or 1.905 centimeters. All right, let's get started and have some fun doing this. Well, I was getting ready to start shooting this next clip and my phone went off. Now, y'all probably don't know, but I am going to school part time to get the degree in the job that I've been doing for five years now. And apparently, the college is now closed for the next two weeks for this uh, coronavirus deal. Oh well, gives me more time to be out here in the shop woodworking and getting ready for the bees. I'm excited for that and here in a week or two I'll be planting my garden. Otherwise, let's get going on this. I've got my first board here at 21 and 3 quarters. Let's get started. I've already made my line. I'm going to cut right on the edge of the outside of that line. Then, since I've got this board made, why not use that as my template for my next deal, my next board. We'll make a mark right there. Let's get that cut. Same thing, I will cut on the outside of the line. got those two boards made. Now, I've got my 16 and 3 8 side. Once again, I've got a mark made, and I will cut on the outside of that. We'll go ahead and use that first cut as our template. I'm going to cut on the outside of that line as well like I did on all of these. Just like that, we got the framework for our first telescopic cover cut. Let's go back over to my makeshift bench and start putting these together. All right, as you can see here, I've got one of the inner covers we previously made. And the way I cut these boards, they will fit perfectly around that inner cover. I mean, there's a little bit of a gap, but not a whole lot of ones. You want to be able to go up and over on this. There will be some swelling of that wood. So if you make this too tight, you're not going to be able to get the darn thing off. I do have a little bit of gap all the way around. I'm going to go ahead and use my tight bond 3, like I've been using every, in all these pieces. Do a little dab, a little streak like that, nothing special. And I'm going to use my 2 inch brad nail. Sorry, yeah, my 2 inch brad nails. Now, like I always say, be mindful of where your fingers are relative to the length of these brad nails. Because like I said before, I have, well you guys have seen it before, where they've come straight through. come up at a weird angle. 
It almost caused us some issues before. All right, we went ahead and glued each side there. Now let's go ahead and get it all nice and even. Oh, see? Another perfect example. I don't know if you all saw that. I'll show you in a second once I get this other one nailed. That is exactly what I was talking about. I'll have to pull that through. That won't be so difficult. Since brown nails are nice and thin anyway. But imagine that little thing right there shooting into your hand. You're going to the doctor and you're having some surgery for sure. I'm going to go ahead and run a couple more in each one of these to make sure we're good. We're at least have three in each side. Just did it again. Always, always be very mindful of where your hands are. Let me find it real quick. Just imagine if my hand was in a bad spot, then that would have come out and nailed it. I would not have been happy. I probably would have finished what I was doing and then went and told my wife and she would have chewed me out for not stopping sooner. And she'd probably be right that I, would have, I should have stopped, but I'm stubborn. So there we go. We're all nailed together. Which will fit nicely over that. That's the inner cover that will go on top of the very top box in the hive. Or on the hive. Then I'll set down on it. Now let's take our big quarter inch 4x8 sheet of plywood. And we're going to cut a piece to fit perfectly on top of this here. Now we can go ahead and measure it out and mark it out on this big old plywood sheet or say to heck with that and just set the piece you just made edge to edge here and take your pen marker what have you and go ahead and trace around it just like that we have our marks made. Now I'm just going to take a circular saw and cut it out. Now do, mind you, cut your, with your blade on the outside of your mark. My mark is right here, so I'm going to cut on this side of it. come in this side. Now this one, make sure to cut on this side of the mark. Mark right here, cut on this side. Just like that, we got ourselves a top piece for our telescopic cover. Now let's go back to over where I put that frame and let's glue it on there. All right, now we're ready to put this piece we just cut off on top of here. I'm going to go ahead and do a very thin stream of glue all the way around to help seal it all. So I got I'm going to set this on here. I'm 
And what I'm going to do, I went ahead and put two inch nails in my brad nailer here, since it is a nailer as well. Sorry, not two inch, one inch. And we're going to go ahead and just staple it all down. I hope I said staples earlier. There's a chance I didn't though. Now when you do this, go ahead and give it some pressure downward. That way if you have any bend in your plywood, that you'll get it right nice and down to the framework you just built. Just like that. Now, y'all might be thinking, well Jake, you can't just do this all with wood. You gotta have an aluminum covering on here or galvanized steel. I'm going with aluminum because it's nice and soft and it's fairly cheap. Pick this up at Menards. It's like a, it's a 24 inch by 10 foot roll. Really cheap. So what I'm gonna do is see how it's a little bit wider than it is. Okay, this is a little bit wider than this piece is long. So what I'll end up doing, I'm gonna cut the straps, of course. Go down to where it's like, I don't know, let me guess about inch or so, you know, 2.54 centimeters down. And then come over here, mark it. I'm gonna cut this piece off and we'll be right back. I'll probably just use regular old tin snips. I don't have any of those fancy shears. So I'll just use my tin snips on this and get it cut and uh, I'll be right back. All right. I changed my mind exactly actually how I'm going to do this. I went ahead and measured on here and added an inch or 2.54 centimeters to each side of it. And I come out to basically 20 inches. So what I did is I measured from here to here 20 inches, put my T-square on it, and then scored the aluminum or aluminium as my friends across the pond would say with ye old knife. I'm just going to follow that line with the snips and get this piece cut off. All right, I'll get that done and uh, I'll be right back. All right, I went ahead and centered this and tacked it on one side with my hand stapler. Because if you use your air stapler, as I found out, you will punch right through this aluminum no matter how low you put your air pressure. All right, so let me show you what I did. Since I got this centered, I'm going to push here, I'm going to make a crease right there so I can come in with my tin snip, put it right up against that wood, cut that, do the same thing with this side. Make my crease, cut it, fold this one down, it'll help if you do this. Fold them in. Do the same thing over here. Do that with this one here. Then you can fold this guy in right here. Same thing with this one. And then, do that to the other side. And go ahead, and fold this puppy down. Make a crease there. Make a crease here. Now mind you, if you're doing this, it's a great idea to wear gloves. I can't find my gloves. So I'm just being extra careful when I get to these edges here. Because when you cut the edges with, say, your shears, you'll actually make them jagged. Then if you run your hand along that, you will cut yourself because that aluminum is going to act like a saw, a saw blade. It's like the same reason you get paper cuts. That paper is not a perfect edge. It's very jagged when you look at it underneath the microscope. Now 
I'm going to go ahead and put a couple up here. Just Well, no, no, I won't. But there it is. We got that made. Not so bad, how is it? All right, friends, there we have it. A telescopic cover made. Using one by material, a sheet of plywood on top, and we're putting our cover on with aluminum. That aluminum I bought that at Menards. You'll probably be able to find that at no matter what home improvement store you go to. It's uh, found mine in the gutter aisle. Way cheaper than buying a sheet of it in the uh, metal section. There we go. That wasn't so bad. I got four more to make. I'm excited to do it. Learned a lot, honed my skills. If this video helped you out in any way, give you some ideas, helps you make your own pieces, or you just plumb enjoyed watching it. Give you a like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I'll pray for your family, you pray for mine. Everybody stay healthy. I'm gonna get back to work. I'll catch y'all later.